So you want to start a new WordPress project. You want to build a new website on WordPress and you've logged in, you've installed all your plugins and you're ready to go. Well, I'm going to tell you to hold on right there. Don't build your site yet until you do these tricks to your WordPress website. The first thing you're going to do is to disable folders for images. Now, if you take a look at the media library, I have a couple of images here. This image in particular, if you look at, if I copy this clipboard, I'm just going to open uh, it on a notepad. Now, if you see the URL is the name of the site slash uploads. Then after uploads, you see the name of the, the year slash the month, then the file name. Now, uh, you don't want to have something like this. There's a lot of disadvantages for having something like this. WordPress designed this file structure as a way of organizing images into dates. But I doubt it's been useful for anyone. I, I ha personally haven't found it useful. Uh, one of the disadvantages of using this kind of structure is that you are unable to have relative path in your designs. For example, if you're doing something and you have a picture that was called, let's say, uh, let's say cats.jpg, and you're designing a website and you want to move that website from one server to another and you have in mind to change these images as you're moving them from one side to another so you want to use something like a relative path like this instead of using like this but because of this structure where you have the dates and the months and the year you will not be able to do that because any file that you upload will have a different date like say like that now so if you upload another file some months later you're not going to be able to reference this relative part because they are in different months so the image that you wanted to replace will not be replaced but if you have a file like this where it is uh, i'm going to copy this to the clipboard also you see how this is i'm just going to shorten these file names okay let's just call this cat also now you can see that this absolute this relative path you know is just wp content upload cat.png now this is what you want to have on your WordPress website. This is how you want all your images, the address to be. So this gives you a very good uh, starting point for a relative path. So how do you do that? Now I'm gonna show you. So what you're gonna do is to go into the settings, go to settings, go to media, and then you're going to disable this, just uncheck this and then save it. And then once you save it, when you upload a new image, it's gonna save it in the uploads folder without breaking it into years and months. The second thing you wanna do is for people that don't like having this admin bar, I've seen a lot of people use plugins just to remove this admin bar and a couple of other people use uh, some PHP script just to remove this admin bar. But you don't have to use a script or a plugin to remove the admin bar. Personally, I don't like having the admin bar when I'm working, especially if I'm working on a site that has a, a fixed header or a sticky header. It just doesn't look right, you know, so I like taking this off. So how to do that is to go into the user profile. That is your own user profile and you will see toolbar. Then you can disable that and just go ahead and update profile. That is going to disable the toolbar for your own user only. You don't want to put a script that disables the toolbar for everyone, all the members of the team that is working on the site. You want to disable it for only yourself if you do not like it. So if I come here and refresh, I don't have a toolbar, but I'm still locked in. Now, if I, for any reason I need that, I can still go back here and then enable it. The third thing you want to do is changing your site language, especially if you're working on behalf of an agency. Sometimes I get to work with people that use the, the language that I don't speak, maybe like French or German. And I want my site to, I want to be able to read this in English. So they set this up in German or French and or Ara Arabic. Now, if you go all the way here to the settings, um, the one thing you should not do is to go to the general settings and change the site language just because you want to be able to understand. So if you're working with other people and the site has already been set to maybe say French or Dutch, you don't want to come to the general setting and change it. That's going to change it for everyone. You're going to go back to your own profile and then you're going to change the language for your profile. So this is going to change the language only for you and not for anyone else on the site. So it is a good way to work with a team by changing these options on your own profile. The third thing you want to do is while you're working on your site, you don't want Google to be indexing it. You don't want search engine to be able to find your site while you're working on it, especially if it is a staging site. So what you want to do is to go into the settings, go to reading, and then you here, you're going to click here, discourage search engine from indexing this site and click save. That is going to discourage, you know, crawlers from crawling your site and displaying it in the search result. Because most of the time, that is not what you want to happen. You want to have your site away from the public before it is time to publish it. 
And the final thing I want to show you today is to change your permalink. So if you go to the site here and for example, you see, take a look at this, you have this product. Uh, this is a, a single product page, but you can see that the way it is being named, you see, you have designworkracker.com and then you have this, these strings of text. So that is not what you want. For example, if I go to the to home and then probably go to this page where you have the product category, you see that I have a category here and then you have that product category. The, the permalink is not readable. It's not, um, it's not really, it doesn't really look nice. Uh, what you want to do is to go into the settings. So what you're going to do, go to permalinks and then instead of having it on plain, I'll recommend you put it on post name and that is going to give you a better structure. So if I save this, that's the first thing you do. Uh, and then I go in here and refresh. Let's just come up. So you can see that it shows the proper thing. So you see the site slash product category slash Android, just the way it is supposed to be. But you may have noticed something if you're working on a WooCommerce site. So I'm going to open this. You see it says uh, site slash product category. If I'm working on a WooCommerce site, you see this shows home, the category name and the product name, but it's not showing the shop. So it jumps all the way from the home page to the category. If I go to the category, it jumps all the way from home, but you're supposed to have a shop there. So what you want to do is go again there and scroll all the way down and you're going to see product permalink. What you want to do here is to change this to shop base with category. Okay. So this is what you want to put there and then you save it. Now, if I go ahead and refresh this notice, it says, uh, the site name slash product slash category and you see this breadcrumb is home slash Android If I refresh this you're gonna see that you have your shop there where you can click and you have shop And then when you click on the single product page you have home shop then the category slash the product So those are the five things you should do before starting a new project If you found this video useful do me a solid and hit the like button and if I get enough like I just might do another tutorial to show you this using Bricks Interactions. So go ahead and hit the like button. Let me know you're interested. Until next time, have a great day.